So here we are beside the River Thames in our own beautiful town of Staines. The River Thames is a very important river and a very significant boundary. It marks the boundary between Staines and Staines, between the borough of Spelthorne and the borough of Runnymede, between the parish of Our Lady of the Rosary and the parish of St John of Rochester, between the Diocese of Westminster and the Diocese of Arundel and Brighton. Some also say it marks the boundary between the county of Surrey and the county of Middlesex, but of course that's not true because there's no such thing as Middlesex. As such, the River Thames is a very, very significant boundary. And so it's not surprising there's a very significant and historic bridge over it behind me, which is known as Staines Bridge. This is one of the oldest and most remarkable structures in the world. It was built in 1832, and what not a lot of people know was that it was built entirely at night. The reason is that there was so much heavy traffic over the bridge that it could only be built at night because that was the only time it was quiet enough. What's also not known is that both sides of the bridge were built at the same time with two engineering teams working towards the middle where they would meet. But because in those days nights were very, very dark, there was no street lighting, no gas lighting, no night lights, no moon, no stars, and there was a lot of fog around. In those days, the only way of making sure they could accurately build the bridge was to cast a rope over the river, tie the rope on the other side, and take some very precise and accurate measurements. Then the rope had to be removed because it would get in the way of building the bridge, and the engineers would have to always rely and always refer on those original measurements, those original facts, and keep going back to them as they built the bridge to ensure it met in the middle. That wasn't always easy. There were a lot of things that could distract them. For example, bad weather conditions, vegetation, or natural features could cause them to forget to stick to that original measurement and they could go astray. A bit like what happened with Chertsey Bridge where there's a bump in the middle. But it's a testament to the engineers here that this didn't happen, that they stuck to those original facts, those original measurements, to what they already knew. And as a consequence, we have this fine bridge that we have today. So what's that got to do with today's gospel? Today's gospel, Jesus is talking to his disciples about giving them a spirit of truth, something that would always remain with them, that they could always rely on when life would get hard. And indeed, for the disciples, it did. After Jesus had ascended to heaven, for those early apostles, there'd be times when they'd be tempted to stray from the truth of their faith, to go in all sorts of directions and to get attracted by all sorts of different things, some of them quite persuasive. And so in the Gospel today, Jesus is warning them and encouraging them to be faithful to that original spirit of truth, to the original fact of God's love for them. And then if they stuck to that, they know that they would never be alone. And so over the years, that's exactly what the disciples did. They, remem they remained truth. They remained true to the spirit of truth that they'd been given. They remained faithful to all that Jesus had told them. They knew that all that they needed to follow him was already in there, in their heart, and they could always rely on it. The same is true for you and me. That same spirit of truth has been given to us, the Holy Spirit. We might think the Holy Spirit is something out there, something that we've not yet received, but we have all been given it. It's implanted in our hearts as our sure guide and our sure hope. And we can turn to that spirit whenever we need to. Living as we do in what seems to us like an uncertain world can make it hard for us to know what to believe, how to live and what the best decisions to make in our lives are. There can be all sorts of competing voices claiming exclusive ownership of the truth. But for us, our truth is Jesus Christ. He is our way, our truth and our life. And it's the truth of his love that is implanted in all of our hearts that we can follow, that is our surest guide. And we call that part of us our conscience. It's our conscience that we can always turn to whenever we have to make a decision or face a dilemma. It's the part of us that helps us to tell right from wrong. Yes, there will be times when we do get things wrong and there will be times when we make mistakes, but our conscience is our starting point. It's a bit like building this bridge. You have to begin with what you know and then begin to build outwards from there trusting in that original truth. The same with us. We begin with what we know deep in our hearts, God's love, 
and we build out from there in all of our decisions, in the way that we treat others, in the way that we face the world. And if we build out from God's love, then we too will create something very great indeed.